and well, it was a tough one. Yeah, it was hard, but I felt it was right. Yeah, it made sense to me. Was it like at least cathartic, you know, of all the times, like if you're going to lose, you know, one of your best friends, like that you guys were actually all together, you know, working together. It was almost like meant to be, so to speak, if it ever was going to happen. Did you have that type of in the moment reaction? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody felt it. You know, that when I was standing at the casket, when we did that scene, uh, I mean, it, it affected everybody, the whole cast. It was a tough one. It was just handled so well, so true to Dallas. I think the whole thing about the reboot, like it's just the whole thing. It felt so true to the original. I mean, I don't know how Cynthia got it. So I think having the three of you there certainly did help. But just the kids were great. The whole thing was just. Kids were great. I Love know. This. Do you think, I mean, I know TNT, I know all the politics. There was new management and came in. Like, do you think it was partly like Larry's passing or was it just more the whole TNT and all like the new regime didn't really believe in the show? Because it was brilliant. I think they used Larry's death as an excuse. And it was a new uh, regime that came in. And it historically, when one regime uh, it turns it over to the new regime, uh, the new regime doesn't want anything to do with the past. I think it was not a smart decision on their part. And um, the ratings were still high. Uh, we all got along. It was it was great. It was amazing ratings. Um, so that's what I think. I think it was just a battle of egos. That, 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 no, that was your show, Dallas, so we're getting rid of it. And I think they used Larry's death as as um, reason. Maybe it was both. I don't know. I, I, I wasn't privy to it all, but it's just my opinion. Do you think, I mean, I know financially how it's owned, there's a lot of pieces and financially it's a very hard show to have anything to do with a reboot, but like, do you think we're done? Do you think we'll ever see you know, you and Patrick and Charlene and Audrey and, you know, maybe even Victoria Principal, or do you think we're really done seeing this on the screen in some respects? Um, personally, I think it's it's done. It's, uh, it was at the perfect, it was the perfect show, the perfect time in history, uh, the perfect cast. Everything was, to me, magical. And to try to uh, put it back like a little puzzle and scotch tape it over here and there. I think, no, I think you live with those absolutely perfect memories and, um, you know, and, and just go on and smile and say, thank you for watching. That's it. I know, you know, you are an in the moment person as I've learned earlier. You've done so much in this business. You have directed, you've done Broadway. Is there something in this business that you haven't done that you still want to do? You know, I don't know. It's a very good question. Uh, it's like, um, I don't know. I don't, I, I always have lovely uh, open possibilities. Uh, it, it would, you, you know, I don't know. If a great script came along, uh, or am I right one? I don't know. Uh, I'm just, I'm kind of coasting right now, trying to uh, not figure out life. I'm enjoying life right now. And uh, if something does come, I would consider it if I liked it. And uh, that, that's it. I'm always open, open to new possibilities, new adventures, new everything. It's like, you never know. You never know. I was at the 40th anniversary at South Fork for Dallas. So, I mean, I know it's, I, I know there was a lot of people there. It was a whole thing. It was great. You guys were there. I mean, the 45th, we're in the 45th year now, I guess nothing is happening. Oh, that's huh? so hard to believe. Yeah. I, I, I can't even believe that was five years ago. Cause that seems like, I don't know, like 20 years ago to me. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It's amazing. You know, I think something happened like last year and my daughter said, mom, that was three years ago. And I'm like, oh my God. So anyway, that's why I enjoy the moment. <laughs> that's a good way to be. 
have you, what did you, like, what do you take away from Sue Ellen? Like, what has she taught you after living with this character for all these years? Like, what have you learned, Linda Gray, as an actress and a mother and a human being from Sue Ellen? Well, you know, I, I always said, I said something. I said, uh, I told someone, I said, I'd like to have lunch with her today. 2023, I would like to have lunch with her and have a little chat about woman to woman and what she's like now. I think she's so interesting, but you know, I I layered in so many things because the minute I got the role, I thought, okay, I see what's happening. She's an alcoholic married to a rich guy. So that doesn't make, Larry was trained, Larry Larry's role, J.R. His, he was trained to marry uh, like a Miss Texas. I was trained to marry the richest man in Texas. So that does not make a wonderful companionship or nor a great marriage by far. So that's why I had asked them to do, bring all, how did she get like this? Why did she marry him? Because he wasn't marriage material other than the money. So I felt that I had, I gave a lot of input because I said, I need to know her mother. And that's when they brought in Martha Scott. So I think that there was a lot of humanity, a lot of input, a lot of female growth that happened with Sue Ellen Ewing that I knew as an actor, I couldn't have her be alcoholic and a bitch. Mm -mm. Because none of us, not you, not me, nobody is one note. Nobody, you have layers and colors and you're, you know, you're mad one day and you're so happy the next day and you're medium and then you, you want to go for a long walk and then you want to not, and you want to stay in bed all day. We're so varied in our emotions and our concepts in life and our, our human growth. And sometimes we're, we don't even like ourselves and sometimes we're just crazy about ourselves, but that's, it isn't, you're not two notes. Sue Ellen was alcoholic and had affairs. And I thought, this is boring. You can't have a character like that. Not in my mind. And so that's when I started <laughs> tightening, tightening things down. Like, uh-uh, she wouldn't do this. No, she wouldn't do that. But she might do this. And that's why... I felt she was so interesting. They could write stuff and I'd have to do that. But I thought there's a, I wanted to add some vulnerability in there. That's when I'd squeak it in. And then that's in the beginning, that's when they saw the um, chemistry. Because you, in my mind, you can't play just one note. Uh, and that was it. That yeah, I just kept playing with her. 